about the problems that face us in Central America. Three years, and I include the last year of the previous administration, the United States has been trying to stop the advance of communism in Central America by doing what Americans do best instinctively, and that is supporting democracy. And the reaffirmation of democracy in Costa Rica, I think, has been evident to all of us. The transition from military rule to elected civilian government in Honduras, and the launching of democracy in El Salvador with the successful elections of last March, I think, demonstrate that they are on the right course. So the good news is that the Marxist revolution is not inevitable in Central America. The bad news is that it cannot yet be ruled out. The military capability of the guerrillas, and let me stress the military capability, for we're not dealing with peasant irregulars, but with a trained military force. They've kept the government from all political and economic progress, all that they that could be made. The central reason for this has been the availability of training, tactical guidance, and military supplies that are coming into El Salvador. <coughs> tons and tons of ammunition are being flown in from Nicaragua. And on our side, the continuing resolution we have has led to a level of security assistance that for El Salvador this year that's only below last year and below what we've requested for 1984. And this is just not enough in this critical moment of their battle for democracy. The Constitution is being written there. President elected presidential elections are being prepared. And uh, the Peace Commission has just given a mandate to finding ways to bring as many Salvadorans as possible into the democratic process, which includes many of those who are out there in the jungle fighting. We've been studying how we can help them help themselves. Economic reform needs time to work. Democracy must be nurtured. But the problem today is that the military strategy of the totalitarians is proving devastating to our, our democratic friends. Military assistance is vital to give the democracy a chance. And yes, millions of people are missing a card here. I'm sure you know I'm not talking about that when I say military assistance about combat. And military assistance is not a complete solution. In fact, the early passage of trade and investment provisions of the Caribbean Initiative is every bit as important. Our friends must know that we'll never abandon them and that we'll pursue our common effort to foster economic development assist the security concerns and to strengthen the forces of freedom. And this means continuing to explore all possible possibilities and reconciliation for peace. And if we allow the government that is transforming itself into a democracy, maybe not as fast as we like, but is reforming, if we allow it to be knocked off by the guerrillas, we who don't have the people with them that was made evident during that election, then no government on the isthmus will be safe. We can't permit this. A half of our trade goes through the Caribbean. We depend on the security of the canal. We cannot accommodate the thousands, yes, millions of people who would flee a disintegrating Central America, <coughs> us as the target for them. We must win the elections. We've been exploring ways to help and, and exploring what is needed there. And El Salvador must be. I've asked George and other senior officials to consult with you over this week ways that we can work together. I hope we can meet again next week and set a common course right now before time to George for them. Information here of what's going on. I'd like to call for a few words on Jean Griffith because she had just returned.